going to start out this grab and go make ahead breakfast recipe video with some breakfast cookies. You're going to need some oats, about two cups. I like to use quick oats. You can use any kind of oats you'd like. Some cinnamon. I don't measure my cinnamon. I just put a bunch in. Two bananas. The riper, the better, but mine weren't quite as ripe as I would like them to be, but they were still great. You're also going to need about three tablespoons of crushed walnuts and about a quarter cup of raisins. But the nice part about this recipe is you can switch it out for anything that you like. If you don't like raisins, leave them out. You could do chocolate chips, you could do cranberries, you could do anything that you would like. But those are the basic ingredients. So all you're going to do is in a large mixing bowl, take your bananas, peel them and mash them. Then go ahead and add your cinnamon, your walnuts and your raisins. Then add your oats and combine well. Either on a non-stick baking sheet or a piece of parchment paper, you're going to lay out your cookies. You can make them as big or as little as you like. I like to get my hands dirty when I'm in my kitchen, so I go ahead and roll these by hand. But if you have a cookie scoop, that works just as well, if not better. So this recipe makes anywhere between 12 and 24 cookies, or even less if you make them bigger. You're going to make little balls, and then you're going to smash them down just a tad with your fingers, because then they get really moist and crispy on the outside. But just so you know, they don't spread when they cook, so you can get them as close together as you would like. Then you're going to put them into your oven at 350 degrees, bake for eight to 12 minutes, depending on how crunchy you would like them. Let them cool fully and then store them in your refrigerator. These don't last long around our house. Typically, I have to make big batches of these and we eat them very quickly, but they are a great grab and go idea for breakfast and they are also really good as a snack recipe as well. This next recipe I actually haven't made in two years to the day, but it popped up on my time hop and I realized, hey, I could totally veganize this. So I did. You're gonna need some maple syrup, some strawberries, two bananas. Side note, if you can't have bananas, substitute for sweet potato or pumpkin. Some oats again, some nut butter of your choice, and then I really like to use the Lily's baking chips, but you can use any kind of chocolate chip that you would like. And these are strawberry, chocolate strawberry, breakfast bars and they're so good. So in a large bowl, you're going to do the same thing. Take your bananas, peel them and mash them. Then you're going to add in your maple syrup and your nut butter and then mix together really well. Then go ahead and add your oats. But when you add your bananas with your creamy ingredients, your maple syrup and your nut butter, it kind of creates the same um, liking as it would with an egg uh, because this re original recipe actually calls for eggs and I think it actually turned out better without the eggs than with. So it's kind of like a baked oatmeal, but it's a bar and they're so gooey and so chewy and so delicious. If you want, you can even take this mixture and make it into the cookies. You can get really creative with it, but you're gonna pour it into either a nonstick baking dish or a baking dish that is sprayed with a little bit of cooking spray just so they don't um, stick once they're baked and you're going to press it down nice and firmly and spread it out and then you're going to layer it with some strawberries and chocolate on the top you can also put some chocolate chips into the mix if you want to and I know kids like these because my nephews love these I made them once for them and they were a hit with them so if your kids are picky with oatmeal maybe try these it might be a good hit but Slice the strawberries super fancy by slicing them sideways. Also, I have a question for you. Are the tops of the strawberries poisonous? 
I saw that recently on a Facebook page and I had no idea. Like that seems very odd to me. I guess they're not edible, but I see a lot of people that eat them. So leave me a comment below and tell me which is true and which is false with that. So decorating the top of this I think is so fun and so fancy. I put this in the oven at 350 degrees once it's all finished with the toppings. I bake it between 22 and 25 minutes. You can bake it longer if you want them to be more crunchy, but I like them to be a little bit crunchy on the outside and super gooey in the inside. And then I usually slice this into four large bars, but the recipe does call for eight but you can do whatever you would like. I don't try to tell people portions, but if that gives you an idea, this is a nine by nine baking dish. And like I said, it's supposed to be eight bars, but I cut it into four. Let this cool fully before you slice them and then store them in your refrigerator for up to one week. Okay, the last recipe was actually something I created about a year ago when I first went plant-based to introduce my husband to like a tofu egg sandwich and I had forgotten about them and then when we were recently at the store I found these vegan friendly um, Bubba's English muffins and I knew they made bagels but I didn't actually know they had English muffins. So you're gonna need some tofu and then veggies of your choice. I decided to do zucchini and onion for this one. You're gonna uh, thinly slice your tofu. I get about seven to eight pieces out of a brick of tofu and I do like to use extra firm. I don't press it or anything. I leave the liquid in it. I put it in a very very hot skillet I usually leave my skillet kind of heat up for a few minutes I have a really great nonstick skillet and then I layer my tofu in and season it with some turmeric and onion powder and then I pop the lid on and let it cook for about two to three minutes on each side and I'll season each side um, before I flip it so I'll put it on the first side and then put the lid on for two to three minutes take the lid off flip them season them pop the lid on again for two to three minutes and I feel like the texture is perfect. And then for my veggies, what I do is I actually steam them in about a quarter cup of water and I feel like that is perfect as well. I don't even wash out my pan. I just put a little bit of water in there so they get some flavor with the seasonings that are left over. But they're also really good grilled. So if you want to grill them in a grill pan or on your grill and these sandwiches can be made ahead, you can also freeze them. You can wrap them in parchment paper if you want to, or you can take them along with you in a little Tupperware, which is what we do. And they are just so good. I feel like they're good cold, they're good warm, they're good fresh, they're good stuck in your refrigerator for a few days and you can take them with you to work. They're even great for lunch. So I hope you give them a try. If you try any of the recipes that I share here today, tag me over on Instagram. I want to see what you created, how you liked it, what your family thought of it. I love sharing uh, all of your posts over on my Instagram stories. So make sure you give me a follow over on Instagram and of course tag me in anything that you make. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I try to share some different ideas when it comes to make ahead breakfasts, things that are good when you have to pop them in your refrigerator or to make ahead if you have to get up early or if you're in a rush or on the go, or maybe you're not a big breakfast eater and maybe this will help you eat a little bit of breakfast. But like I said, I just pop this in a Tupperware container and take it with me and I feel like it's perfect. I hope you enjoyed also the recipe inlays that I popped in with today's video. Have an awesome day and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye.